Hey freaks, it's JJ. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I talk about rock and metal music and I cover these stories behind some of my favorite concept albums. Uh, I'm also an author too um, and I just recently published my novella titled Eris, uh, which I wrote in collaboration with the band Illyria to turn their concept album into a full-fledged story. So if you're interested in that, links will be down in the description. Today I am very excited to be talking about uh, Mastodon's 2017 album Emperor of Sand. I love, love, love this album and recently I I've just been listening to it on repeat just over and over and over again and it it might be for me recently I don't know it might be right up there with Crack the Sky as far as like my favorite albums by theirs so really excited to cover this album and it has a really uh sad and deep uh backstory to it and a lot of really um you know meaningful symbolism throughout the album so uh yeah let's get into it before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support what I do here on this channel, make sure you get the little bell thing to get notified when I put out other content such as this. Um, also, feel free to join my Metalhead community. Link to that will be down in the description. Basically, it's just an email list and you get monthly newsletters from me with bonus content and all that good stuff. Let's talk about Emperor of Sand. Um, Basically, some things that you should know beforehand, uh, before getting into this album, is that uh, the band wrote this album um, basically while they were all experiencing um, cancer of some sort, a uh, loved one going through cancer or things like that. So, uh, Brian's mom was going through chemotherapy at the time the, the album was written. Um, Bill's mom actually died from cancer uh, while the uh, the album was being written, and Troy's wife was also diagnosed with breast cancer during this time. So. They all, for the most part, you know, the cancer has really touched a lot of the the uh, members' lives in this uh, in some way or another. And so uh, this this uh, concept is really about um, dealing with cancer and loved ones who are going through cancer. Uh, so yeah, I'll I'll be giving my own kind of explanation of this this concept and how I kind of think the story goes. It's going to differ a lot from some other theories that I've read on the internet, but I've based it mostly on interviews from the band and things that they have said about the concept. So uh, let's start off with track number one, Sultan's Curse. So here we meet our protagonist and he is wandering the desert. Uh, we then come to learn that our protagonist has just been cursed by the Sultan. Um, and so my theory is this isn't really anywhere in the lyrics. And there's not really anything said by the band that could back this up, but this is just my personal um, interpretation of, uh, of the album. But, but my theory is that our protagonist was cursed by the Sultan uh, because he was caught in bed with the Sultan's daughter. The Sultan cast this curse on our protagonist and it's basically cancer is what is what the uh, the Sultan gave him. And although uh, the word cancer isn't used in this um, in this concept as far as like the, the world and the fantasy uh, building that this... Um, concept is based around it's basically representative of cancer is what the curse is and so our protagonist has escaped the sultan's clutches but the curse he knows is a death sentence so he feels like there's maybe no hope for him so he begins wandering the desert aimlessly trying to find a way out um he has no food no water and he begins to burn in the sun and so he passes out in the sand and when he wakes he begin he then begins to hallucinate Track two, show yourself. So our protagonist is in the desert. It's daytime. The sun is beating down. And uh, he then starts to see the sultan appear from this mirage. And so our protagonist decides to go and confront the sultan. And he begins screaming at him, taunting him, and challenging him to show himself, show his true colors. Um, and the sultan kind of disappears and reappears. And our protagonist isn't really sure whether or not what he's seeing is real um, or if it's a hallucination. Uh, but a, a cool quote from a brand on this track um, that I found in a, an article on Revolver. He says, um, he says, I could picture him half naked, delusional and dirty from the sand, just splashing around in a puddle that wasn't really there. So I think that's a great representation of our protagonist's state of mind. At this point in time, he is really beginning to lose it and not really knowing what is real and what is not. Track three, Precious Stones. Uh, so our protagonist then meets the Emperor of Sand, which of course is this guy right here and our uh, little cover art um, being that is on the, the cover. And so uh, this being of death, which is basically the Grim Reaper, but of course he looks way cooler than the Grim Reaper. Um, he tells our protagonist that he, uh, he doesn't have much time left and that uh, our protagonist should do whatever he can with the precious stones that he has left in the hourglass before they all fall through and the curse eventually takes his life. 
So the way I imagine this taking place is like the emperor then like bursting into like a hundred snakes and the snakes speak all at the same time, urging our protagonist to uh, take advantage of his precious time and stop wandering the desert aimlessly and do something about his, his situation. So protagonist then uh, becomes pretty fearful of this emperor. Even once he's gone, he feels like the emperor is inside his head reading his thoughts when really it's the sun that is making him delusional. Next up, we have track number four, Steam Breather. Um, and here, our protagonist grows even more delirious as time goes on. Um, he, uh, he ends up praying to the various tribes of the desert and begs them to hear his thoughts. He asks the, the tribes to use their ritual powers to conjure the rain. Uh, he thinks that you know, if if only it could rain, then he will be all right. Uh, but, you know, he, he's not sure if he's communicating with them. He, he starts to think that he is talking to them telepathically, but then again, he's not sure if that's real or not. So, uh, the uh, tribes speak back to him in his mind, and they say that they are already doing everything that they can to help him, but he must be patient and continue to persevere. So here in my version of the story, um, I, I added the, the love story with the Sultan's daughter because I feel like a lot of this album has to do with seeing a loved one go through uh, something very difficult. And so I feel like the, it's very present in this album that there is some kind of love story uh, between the protagonist and another character. So in my version of the story, uh, this is where we get to kind of like the backstory between the protagonist and the sultan's daughter. And so uh, we learn about the, the love that he has for the sultan's daughter and their plan to run away together and get married in secret. But the sultan ended up catching them and he beat his daughter severely and then cursed the protagonist. It's at this time that when the protagonist is cursed that he realizes that if he really loves the sultan's daughter that he would stay away so that she won't see any further punishment and also so that she won't have to watch him suffer and and die of this curse. Track 5, Roots Remain. Our protagonist then begins flashing back to his time with the Sultan's daughter, his lover. Uh, he remembers what it was like to fall in love with her way back before everything kind of went to shit. Um, and so the memories uh, make him kind of hallucinate that the desert is on fire because he's so hot from the sun scorching him. And uh, he begins to hallucinate a vision of the Sultan's daughter. And so uh, she is there at the center of the fire and she is completely unburned and she's just this kind of beautiful, majestic being um, that is there to, to speak with him. And she begs him to fight for his life and not give up because he's so close to just wishing that he were dead so that he doesn't have to go through all this torture. Um, but after speaking with her, he ends up promising this vision of her that he will fight to the end um, so that he can maybe see her one last time. Uh, so he says goodbye to the hallucination of his lover and swears that he will love her even in death. Um, and then the fires that he imagines kind of consumes her and the vision of her disappears. Track six, word to the wise. So our protagonist then dreams slash hallucinates that he is kind of like floating above the, the flames of the desert. He imagines the desert, you know, as being all on fire because it's so fucking hot. And that's, you know, what it feels like. It feels like he's just in this inferno, just burning to death. And he begins ruminating on like the choices and the decisions that he's made that have led him to where he is now. And in this kind of altered state of mind that he's in, he uh, reaches out to another tribe of the desert and begs them to, you know, entreat the gods to bring rain. He again believes that if only it would rain, it would just save him from having to be burned uh, alive in the desert. And so he telepathically communicates with this tribe and they say that they will save him only if he admits to all the wrongs he has done in his life. And so he confesses his mistakes and, is, and accepts the fact that, you know, it was his own fault, um, you know, what he did to end up cursed and wandering the desert. And the, the tribe then thanks him for his confession and they promise that they are doing all that they can to save him, but he just must be patient for a little while longer. Track 7, Ancient Kingdom. So here our protagonist minds really begins to crumble more so than it already has been. Um, and, you know, he just is continually scorched day after day by the sun. He's growing more and more dehydrated. Um, and he, he doesn't know how much more he can take. Uh, he sees that his end is, is pretty near. Um, you know, if, if the uh, desert conditions don't take him, then the curse definitely will. Um, and he thinks about what he said to his lover in the vision and how he 
and how she begged him to keep fighting, but he feels like he is breaking down. He, he's not sure how much longer he can hold on. And so he wants to keep living, but every moment is just a battle to survive for him. So he knows once his mind gives in, he knows his body will soon follow. Um, and he's also starting to think that these tribes that he's asked for help are not actually helping him. Um, and maybe he didn't even actually visit them with his mind. He thinks maybe that was just all a part of his uh, hallucinations and that he's just going to end up dying um, there in the desert alone and unable to save himself. Um, so just as he thinks that, you know, all is lost, it then begins to rain. Track 8, Clandestiny. Our protagonist then meets these weird, uh, bright, uh, crystalline beings, and he realizes that these beings are the ones that have brought the, the rain, um, which at the time we don't actually know that the rain is not actually real, it's just in his mind. Um, but these beings have brought the rain and they have saved him from the scorching sun. They scoop him up off the desert floor and uh, they, they tell him all he has to do is drink this magical potion and he will be cured overnight. And so uh, all they want is something from him in return for this magical potion. And so he is too weak and delirious to refuse and so he agrees to give them whatever he wants and he drinks the potion. Track 9, Andromeda. So in this track, our protagonist then finds that these crystalline beings were actually never there to help him. Uh, they tricked him with this potion that ended up only making him even weaker so that he cannot escape. And so uh, the crystal being's plan was to suck the life out of him so that they can grow stronger while he withers away. And so they begin taking all his, his life force and he begins to realize what he's done uh, by placing his trust in those that don't deserve it. And so the tribes that he contacted um, through his telepathy were actually really trying to help him. Um, he didn't realize it until this moment, but uh, the, uh, the tribes were trying to make him stay in the sun because the sun rays would eventually kill the curse that the Sultan cast over him. And so uh, Brandaler has said uh, in, in interviews on this uh, album that the sun represents radiation. And I'm just going to couple it in there with chemotherapy too. So uh, the, these tribes were really trying to help the protagonist by giving him radiation and chemotherapy in the way of this, uh, this sun scorching the, the cancer cells from him. But our protagonist didn't realize that. And so he thought that the sun was killing him because when you go through cancer treatments, a lot of times you feel like you are getting worse before you feel like you're getting better. And uh, so he didn't trust the, the people who were really trying to help him and he ended up trusting the overnight cure of these other beings. Um, so instead of being patient, he trusted the magical cure and now he is too weak and out of time to save himself. Track 10, Scorpion Breath. So this here is the protagonist's last hours. Uh, the crystal beings are gone. They took what they wanted from him. They stole his, a lot of his life force and they left him alone in the desert to die. Uh, his body begins to wither away and his spirit meets all the other spirits that the Sultan has cursed with this curse of cancer. And um, all the other victims of the Sultan's powers then make themselves known and they begin sharing their stories of uh, what they went through with this curse. And last but not least, that takes us to our final track, Jaguar God. Uh, so it is here that our protagonist is just lying helplessly in the desert, and he ends up being recaptured by the Sultan's men. And so the protagonist's mind is way too far gone to realize what is even happening to him. He uh, thinks he's being taken back to the Sultan's daughter, and so he kind of rejoices in the idea of seeing her once again. So uh, he, his body then dies with a smile on his face, but his spirit goes on. So he kind of dies, but doesn't die in this situation. He had promised the Sultan's daughter that he would always keep fighting, and so that is what he does even once his body dies. So a quote from Bran here on uh, how this uh, concept pretty much ends in this track. He says, But in death he assumes the shape of the jaguar, which is what the Mayan shamans become when they're going into another dimension to fight disease and illness. So here our, uh, our protagonist then lives on as this uh, jaguar god. And from there, uh, I believe it'll be his mission to kind of help all the other people who are going to be cursed by the sultan and help them fight through the curse and the, uh, the treatment as well. So that is it for this concept album. That is where we end. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys liked my little uh, rendition of uh, of Emperor of Sand. I know it's going to differ quite a bit from some of the uh, theories that I read on like Reddit and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I really tried to take a lot of it from what, uh, what I've gathered from quotes from the band and also knowing that it's um, 
well, there's a lot of symbolism and stuff to do with cancer. And really, the album in itself is about dealing with loved ones who have been diagnosed with cancer and who have lost their lives to cancer. So I kept that in mind as I as I came up with this concept. And I would love to hear from all of you. Let me know it down in the comments what you think or if you imagined any of the songs differently. I'm always curious to know your guys' theories. You guys always come up with some really cool ones that I didn't even think about. So uh, please share that down in the comments. And again, yeah, I cannot say enough how much I really love this album. Um, I hope you guys like it as much as I do. Um, and that's about it. That's all I've got for this week. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching, freaks.